seven-member bench, led by Chief Justice Kazi Fayez Isa, is addressing the debate on whether disqualification under Article 62 f results in a five-year ban or a lifetime disqualification. The court, seeking clarity before the February 8 general elections, navigates the complexities arising from the 2018 judgment and a subsequent 2023 amendment specifying a five-year disqualification period. Advocate Karam Rizar argued for lifetime disqualification, questioning the proceeding's maintainability. The top judge emphasized the need for clarity, expressing concerns about discretion in such matters. The discussions covered constitutional interpretations, historical context, and the implications of the 2018 judgment. As hearings continued, lawyers presented arguments on interpreting constitutional absences and the applicability of court declarations to subsequent elections. The court aims to provide a clear resolution to the disqualification period debate, considering the amendment in the Elections Act 2017. These proceedings are part of the court's efforts to bring clarity and prevent confusion for returning officers during the upcoming elections. The PTI is challenging the Peshawar High Court's decision to restore the Election Commission of Pakistan's revocation of the parties, BAT symbol, citing intra-party election discrepancies. PTI, initially stripped of its symbol for not holding polls in line with requirements, secured a temporary suspension from the PHC. However, an Election Commission appeal led to a PHC review, prompting PTI to appeal to the Supreme Court, alleging jurisdictional overreach and discrimination. In another development, the Sindh Election Tribunal accepted PTI Central Vice President Ferdas Shamim Nakvi's appeal against the rejection of his nomination papers for Karachi's NA236 constituency in the February 8 polls. Mr. Nakvi, among other PTI leaders, had papers rejected and appealed through lawyer Gibran Nasir. The decision was favorable for Mr. Nakvi, currently under house confinement for a case related to May 9 violent incidents. Turning to Punjab, the Pakistan Electronic Media Regulatory Authority clarified to the Lahore High Court that there is no current ban on broadcasting former Prime Minister Imran Khan's speeches. Mr. Khan had challenged PEMRA's decision to bar satellite TV channels from airing his speeches, alleging a violation of constitutional rights. The court emphasized PEMRA should refrain from pressuring TV channels on the petitioner's concerns, concluding the ongoing proceedings. Israeli army spokesperson Avikai Adre updated Gaza instructions, closing the Salah al-Din humanitarian corridor. It shifted to al-Rashid Street, open from 9 to 4 p.m., allowing north to south movement. Local military activity suspension was set in al-Braq and Jaffa from 10 to 2 p.m. for humanitarian supply. Israeli operations intensified in the central governorate after a night of shelling. Tanks were seen at al magazs northern entrances, prompting mass evacuations from Buri, Magazi, and Nuzira to Deir al-Bala. Leaflets labeled these areas as dangerous combat zones, urging residents to flee urgently. In the West Bank, an Israeli raid on Nur Sham's refugee camp in Tulkarim injured at least 17 Palestinians. 13 suffered broken bones during detention or interrogation. Israeli forces detained nearly 400 men, conducting widespread searches and off-site interrogations. Meanwhile, UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, expressed deep concern over Israeli ministers discussing Gaza's population transfer. He emphasized the rights of Gaza's internally displaced, citing international law against forcible transfer or deportation. Qatar's foreign ministry also strongly condemned Israeli statements about displacing Gaza's population. It asserted that collective punishment and forcible displacement wouldn't alter Gaza's Palestinian identity. In Iran, authorities revised the death toll from twin blasts in the country south to 84 down from the initial count of 95. The explosions occurred during a commemoration ceremony for a top general in the city of Kerman. The elite revolutionary guards and first vice president has vowed revenge, labeling it a terrorist attack. The U.S. administration described the incident as resembling past actions by Islamic State militants. No group claimed responsibility, so far. In Beirut, thousands awaited the funeral of Saleh al aruri deputy chief of Hamas, and six other members assassinated in their office. Although Israel hasn't officially claimed responsibility, Israeli media suggested involvement by a fighter jet using guided missiles. 